Hey everybody, Eric here. And today we're gonna to go beyond desktop in order to put the sketch back in SketchUp. So if you're like me, you probably like putting a lot of detail in your model and you take a lot of pride in having a really good looking model, but there are some reasons why you actually want to pull back on the level of detail, even if you have it already modeled, or even if you can model it fairly easily. So the idea of modeling just enough information to give you a base layer to sketch over the top of, especially in the early phases of a project, like when it's an early concept, it's actually a great tool to be able to do. So what I'm gonna do right now is share with you not just the sketching part of the process, but even before the things we need to think about to get our SketchUp model prepped in order to be able to export to draw on top of in an app like Photoshop. Let's just get to it. So we're gonna come back to this in a minute. Like all things with these videos, they start in SketchUp, even if we're gonna go somewhere else. So I'm gonna start with this model here. You maybe have seen it before, maybe not. It's kind of a cool little courtyard canopy concept for like a uh, office complex. And what I wanna do is think about the information that I need. Now, one thing I didn't model here was a bunch of plants. Number one, it was gonna take me a while. Number two, Sometimes stuff from 3D Warehouse can be really high poly. So what I'm gonna do is sort of leave the plants out. I like to draw those anyway. Same thing with the people. I could choose to kind of turn the people on and off. If I wanna draw my own people, maybe I turn them off. In this case, they're pretty basic people. So I think I can just draw over the top of them. Um, and that's pretty much it. So what I wanna start with is just simple lines, just black and white lines. So I wanna come up here to view, face style, and I'm gonna go hidden line. Now, what that does is it knocks out the color, so almost like a pencil sketch, like a really light version. This is gonna be the base that I draw on top of. But I need to do one more thing. I do have a sky in here, so I kinda of wanna turn that off. I just want like super, I want it to be just plain white. So now that one's ready to export. File, export, 2D graphic. The settings are totally up to you. I'm using my view size, which is 1920 by uh, 936, so not quite 1080p. Uh, to just think about you know the size you want it. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna call this SketchUp lines, and I say SketchUp because I will be drawing some hand-drawn lines. Now the next thing I want is some shadows. I may or may not want to draw all the shadows myself. At least we should take a look at what the shadows look like here in SketchUp, uh, because chances are I'm gonna use those, and then I'll just kind of add some where I where I want to. So I'm gonna turn the profiles and edges off so that everything kind of disappears, which maybe is a little bit concerning. But when I come up here to turn my shadows, which I have a little icon if I want to use that, or I can come up here and turn them on within the shadows dialog box. And there are my shadows back. Now this is where, you know, we've got to probably darken it to a point where if we wanted to select the shadows, we don't want them too light, even though I do like light shadows, I can always go back in Photoshop later and darken them or change the color. And then here I need to think about where I want the shadows to fall. It's a little bit dark in the foreground. If I'm gonna do this as a sketch, maybe I wanna lighten that up a little bit. Maybe I wanna push the shadows to something like earlier in the morning, um, You know where I think some, a little bit more of this courtyard I think is in the sun. I think that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna go File, Export, 2D Graphics, same thing. I'm just gonna call this SU for short for SketchUp and Shadows. So that's two down, two of three. We only need to do one more. This last one actually is optional. This last one is what I call color by tag. So turn the shadows off. And while the lines and edges aren't showing, this is perfect, I'm gonna turn my face style. View, let's see here, face style. I wanna go back to shaded with textures. It's a little bit dark, but don't worry, we'll fix that. I'm gonna come up here also to my tags panel. And there's this little, if you hover over it, color by tag. So I'm gonna turn that on. Now my tags have different colors to organize um, different things and different elements. So I purposefully gave those different colors. I'm not gonna go into that. There's plenty of videos that kind of explain how that works. But back in the shadow settings, what I wanna do is push the darkness slider up to 90 and the lightness slider down to zero. What this does is it gives me basically a true and uniform color. So you'll notice there's no shading or anything. Now this is for, um, if you're familiar with rendering, then you would know that you can, this is like kind of a material ID export. And if I want to do a quick select of just my glazing, just what's glass, I can just say, select everything that's cyan colored. 
And this will help me when I'm drawing, if I want to stay out of a certain area, if I want to mask a certain area. So I'm going to go File, and I'm going to Export. This is my third export, 2D Graphic. And I'm going to call this, of course, SketchUp again, just so that I know in CBT, which is short for Color by Tag. So let's see what we've got here. We've got, if we did this right, we should have one, two, three exports here in, uh, on, our, on my desktop or in my file that I saved them to. So I'm going to bring those over. You can't see, but I'm going to hover them over into hover them over to Photoshop. And because they were all exported with the same proportions, I just hold shift and drag and drop the lines in and then hold shift and drag and drop the shadows in. Good um, habits is probably just to rename them if they didn't come in with their names. And I'm going to call that the same names that I've already had before. And um, I shouldn't really name the shadows because I'm going to change it in just a second. You'll see here. So let's zoom in just a little bit, not too much. And then what I want to do here, the first thing I want to do, pretty much I always do, is I kind of get rid of the darkness of these shadows. So I just bring this in as a placeholder. In Photoshop, if you know Photoshop, um, then you know that you can select by color range. So in this case, I'm going to select everything that's this sort of dark gray or medium gray. There's a slider here, so if you want to select more or less of something, you can do that. And this isn't really a Photoshop lesson, so I'm not going into any of the details too much about how Photoshop works. But it should give me a good selection of mostly this sort of um, dark gray color range. So if I turn this layer off and create a new one, then I might call this SketchUp Shadow. And if I want to keep the old one, I may want to differentiate it, or I can just dump the old one because I don't really need it anymore. And I'm going to call this shadow color. So in this case, I'm going to come over here and paste a new color. And if you don't like this purple color, you know, obviously you can, you can if you're doing this at home, you can pick whatever color you want, blue shadows, you want sort of more warm shadows, um, you can pick whatever you want. The point of this was really to kind of say that hey, I, I actually want to bring in a little bit of that. Um, I want to bring in a little bit more of a pop of color and not just have that sort of be uniform. So that's it. So that's it with the shadows. I'm kind of done with the shadows. There's some more we can do. If I want to paint some shadows in, I'm going to do that in just a second. Um, we can paint some more shadows in, but this is a pretty good start. This gives us most of our shadows. Now let's pop over to the SketchUp lines. They're a little bit dark and I'm about, I'm going to trace them myself. So what I'm going to do is I want to pull back um, again. I'm just using them as a reference. So maybe I would pull them all the way back to something like 50% or 25%, 35%, somewhere in there. And this color by tag, this is going to meant to be frozen. So again, this is only if we need to do like a quick selection. Like if I wanted to select everything um, within my canopies, you can see how quick that was for me to select this if I wanted to draw within that or paste some color or something like that. So we're going to come back to that in just a second. Right now I want to get into the sketching part. So right now we only have four, uh, we only have four layers and three if I get rid of those gray shadows. So right now we're doing pretty good keeping our file simple. I want to pop over here. I want to create two new, um, let's see here. I want to create two new, one, two new layers. One of these is going to be for a sketch color. I'm just calling it sketch color, so I know the difference between sketch and sketch up. And this one is going to be sketch lines. So with the sketch lines here, now this is probably a good point for me to share what I'm drawing on, which is this is a Cintiq. So I'm going to switch cameras here to my Cintiq. So what you should be able to see is here's my pen. And if you don't have a Cintiq, then this works just as well. You can see the process with the iPad. The thing that I like about Photoshop is that if you're working in Photoshop, you can just send it from your desktop over to your iPad. And then instead of using a Cintiq pen, you're using the Apple Pencil. So again, whether you're using Procreate, Photoshop, Morfolio Trace, any of those things, that's up to you. The tool is yours, but the process is kind of what I want to focus on. So here we go, sketch lines. Now that I kind of showed you how I'm drawing here, let's go ahead and draw some stuff in. I'm going to zoom in. And I'm going to draw, um, like, like I said, the vegetation might be really difficult to get these climbing vines, you know, get them perfect. And they might be really high poly. So this would be a good thing that I might be able to draw just really quick with just a loose little textural thing. Same thing here. 
maybe there's um, some vines climbing up this sort of green wall and just kind of decide the level of detail. It all kind of depends on, you know, how much time you have, but this actually might be way faster than doing, um, you know, arranging, scattering vegetation or going in and finding, looking in the 3D warehouse, because this is really just meant to be, um, it's a concept, right? So what are these plants? I don't know. Do they grow in this area? I don't know exactly. I want some ferns, something that maybe can, or some palms that can do well in the shade. Maybe put some, something like some flowers some, on the vines. Um, so I'm just drawing fairly fast. And you'll notice I'm not even switching um, pen weights. So if I was going to do this for real and I really wanted this to look super cool, I'd maybe use different pen weights or pencils. But what I'm doing is just kind of really quickly putting in things that I didn't either have time to find on Entourage or things that maybe somebody had marked up and that were missing. Um, hanging fans and fixtures, climbing vines, signage, you know, stuff again that from a design standpoint maybe doesn't need to be modeled, but maybe could be just brought in fairly quickly with some, with some um, squiggled lines. And if you have people here, for me, I'm kind of simplifying. I'm not trying to draw too much detail over the scale figs. And the reason why is because if I wanted to add some people, my people tend to be um, a little more blocky and, you know, I don't know, crab-like in their legs. So if I wanted to draw a few more people, you know, I would, I would want to maybe have that consistent look. So even if I draw over the scale figs that are already in there, I might simplify them a little bit. Again, putting some people that are dining and sitting down. Now I could keep doing this. I could draw... I could do this, I could spend quite a while drawing, just tracing this, but that's kind of the point is that even though it feels redundant, you can go in and create, you know, a sketchy line style if you wanted to. Um, and it does kind of feel redundant to go in and draw over this like, like I am. But what's really cool is that it feels like if I took, you know, again here, just as a really quick example, you can see that just in a couple of minutes of sketching, I've got something that looks um, pretty loose. And again, I can kind of choose here. Maybe I want to put a layer mask and maybe I want to come in and mask out some of the stuff that came in from the SketchUp model so that I'm kind of picking and choosing what I want to show from my hand drawing and what I want to show from the SketchUp model. And that's kind of a way to do it. You could either cover it up with like some with some paint, or you could kind of mask out some of the stuff. Um, so again, I'm using the SketchUp model to do some of the things that I'm not. Maybe I don't want to draw every single one of these windows. Well, that would be a good way to come in and, and use either use the selection tool, or I could come in and use the ma mask out just the windows, and then let that show in. So this is kind of like a hybrid approach where I'm only drawing the things that I think where I want to draw your attention to or your focus, like the ground plane, um, or where I want to, I know it would take me too long if I was to sit and try and like model all of these vines and stuff by myself um, in SketchUp. So again, the reasons kind of vary for why I might choose to do one over the other. Let's put a quick pop of color in this thing before we wrap up. So like I said, I, I kind of spent some time and effort doing this, um, exporting this color by tag. So if I wanted to, I could come over here and grab something like just this ground plane, select color range, ground plane, and then turn that off. And then on my sketch color layer, could maybe grab, and you don't really need a pen display for this. If you really wanted to, you could probably do this fairly well with, um, you know, it's really just a, if you're coloring it anyway, you could do the, um, you could kind of do a lot of this too with a mouse, but I do like the kind of looseness that you get. So here is, um, I'm on the sketch color. I'm just kind of putting this color wash in. Same thing here. If I wanted to put the lines above this, I could do that, you know, so that we could see those score lines and you can start to see this 
come together. So let me pull up the one. Let me stop there because, of course, I can get I get carried away and I have fun and I start putting in little splashes of color everywhere. But let me stop there and switch over to my finished one, and then we'll wrap up by taking a look at what that kind of looks like with one that's had a little bit more time and energy put into it. So this is the one that I finished. You'll notice the difference between this one and the other one is that I have a background. I put a sky in, and I put a frame around it. So let me zoom out just a little bit. Um, so you can see if I turn that frame off and I turn that sky off, we're left in basically the same position that I started with just a few minutes ago with you. Turn the shadows off. You can see I've got my sketch lines. I can pull back the color of those and make them lighter, or I can push that up and make that a little bit darker. And you can see what happens when I turn that color. When I turn that color off, um, same thing. I can sort of push that color back a little bit, or I can push it up to full saturation. And then you can see, lastly, I've got these SketchUp lines. These SketchUp lines are faded way back, so I can push those forward, and of course it gets darker, or you can push them back and just have them there just as that sort of subtle reference. I'm going to leave it there because, like I said, and to do this properly, I would need more than a YouTube video. Maybe this will become a SketchUp Campus course or something someday. But the points that I want to reinforce are number one is you don't need a lot from your SketchUp model. You need lines. You need shadows. If you have color and you want to bring a base layer of color, you can do that too. If you have, you want to do the CBT, uh, which is the color by tag, so that you can do selections, you can add that in. That helps as well. Um, but it's basically, each model is going to be a little bit different. So point is, though, is have some fun, put some creative expression on it, and uh, don't, don't be afraid to just jump in and play around. That's how I learned how to do all this stuff, is just by playing around. So I'm going to leave you with that. I'm going to thank you all for watching, and uh, let me know in the comments below. Do you sketch already? Do you use Morfolio Trace? Are you a Procreate person? Are there apps that I haven't even heard of? Do you go to Illustrator? Let me know what your process is, and I would love to learn from you in the comments. So thanks, as always, and see you next time.